Hi, everyone, and welcome to Lecture 7 of ECE 3311 Principles of Communication Systems. Uh, in this lecture is the all-important topic of eye diagrams and bit synchronization. So uh, just a heads up, uh, there's actually not a lot of math here. Actually, the topic is very mathematical, uh, but uh, these slides are really more illustrative uh, in order to provide insight on the concepts of what the heck is an eye diagram, how it works, and a little bit about the concept of how you perform bit synchronization. So let's get to it, all right? Ah, okay, a lot of code. I, I told you, no math, but lots of code. So here's some Python code uh, describing what we're gonna be doing, all right? Actually, let, let me illustrate. Uh, and then on your own, you can implement this code and check it out for yourselves and reproduce the plots that uh, I actually have over here. Okay, so let me bring it over. And do, 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 do. Okay, perfect. So what happens is um, eye diagrams uh, are a great tool for detecting various types of distortion, okay? Uh, latency, uh, intersymbol interference, uh, noise, right? The way they work is the following. So suppose you have, and we actually have this in the sample Python code that I included. Suppose you have something like this you have symbol periods of duration t, okay? Suppose we use, it's a binary representation, right? And we use cosine shape cycles to represent either a one or a zero being communicated per period. So this represents one, zero, one, one, zero, one. All right, great. And suppose where you sample this to say, ah, that's most definitely a one, right? And that's most definitely a zero. Because what happens is the receiver will not take the whole cosine, right? It might, but the simplest thing it'll do is it's gonna go here, at the sampling instant, right? So let's say it's T samp, right? And, uh, and, and what, what happens is let's say like from, uh, no, 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 no. Let's say it samples there and there and there and there and there to get sort of the clearest picture amplitude wise as to what has been transmitted during that symbol period. T, right? So these are spaced out also by a factor of T. So these sampling instances, let's say this is A minus A, A, A minus A, A. So great. And we're going to send tens and thousands, millions of these things and such. Um, but how do you know if, let's say, there's any distortion going on? So that's where you do the eye diagram. And this is a really cool tool. So let me show you how it works. The way it works is the following. You take one symbol period and you say, okay, and you plot that. So let's go to another slide. So you take, me, me, me. So zero to T, one symbol period. And in there, Let's take the first symbol period. Cool. Then going back to our plot, next guy. You take him, this symbol period, you overlay it with the first. So basically what you do, the eye diagram is the superposition of every period of a symbol over and over and over and over again, right? So what should you get? Should really be the following. So if let's say you take this, then you superimpose on that period, this period, superimpose on those two periods, this period, so on and so forth. So what you get at the end of the day is something that looks like this over 
and over and over. And you know that the sampling instant for that period for every symbol is going to be in the center point. And, and so what happens is this is good. This is the tool. So you can have millions of symbols and all you need is this one plot. So this is the eye diagram, right? And when we have a situation like this, right? Like a really big space in between two voltage levels that denote different meanings, like uh, one or zero, right? Binary one or binary zero. We refer to this as the eye being open. So what we're worried about is when the eye is closing, right? And there's a lot of stuff that can cause that, right? So actually, let's go back to the first plot. So suppose I have that, and now I have unwanted signals. So let's say, what did we have? Let's say you had something that looked like that. We had noise superimposed. There's noise in the environment that's contributing to the signal. Um, what was it again? Up, down, up, okay. Up, 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 up. What will the eye diagram look like? From zero to one, uh, zero to T, for every period, you're gonna get something that looks like this. So the eye is now closing. Not good, not good at all, right? But we have a useful tool. We look in and say, ah, I think there's a little bit of noise in the channel. And the more it closes, the more noise there is present, right? So let's actually switch back to the slides, right? If we run this co code by itself, we get this, okay? This is the time domain plot, exactly what I drew. And this is what the eye diagram looks like across one symbol period. This is how I introduce noise now to that same transmission. And you get that and you get that type of eye diagram. Now, let's put in some delay, okay? And this is how I would do it. I would create um, a linear, uh, I would create a filter that has delay elements, right? This is my filter, right? So I create a little bit of delay. And what should I get with respect to a delay? This is what I should get. I should get, I don't get that. The, uh, the, like if I have a delay, in addition to the distortion caused by that filter that causes the delay, here's that T, 2T. T. I'm not gonna draw all of them, but instead of having ideally that, 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 no. Well, I'm going to get is something that looks like this. And you might say, so what? Who cares? Very important. You, what is the receiver going to do? The receiver is going to sample there, 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 there. Because it doesn't know about the delay, not, not right away. It's going, to theor it's going to sample where the theoretical maximum or minimum is right? Not where it actually is. That's a problem, right? That's where the maximum is, and we're a little bit offset. So how does your eye diagram look like? It's going to, well, that's what's going to look like shifted. You can't tell from here, right? So imagine you're trying to debug your system. You say, well, it looks fine. Nope. Eye diagram says the eye is shifted. It's not closed, but it's like uh, looking to the, in this case, looking to the right. That's a problem. It indicates that there's a delay in the system and your system is not properly realigning to account for that delay such that it maximally samples at the correct points. Okay, so that's how, you know, in a nutshell, how eye diagrams work.
As for bit sync, so suppose you get that waveform now at the receiver, what do you do? And you have all that noise and all that garbage, right? And you have negative and positive values. The way you do bit synchronization, right, is you square the signal. So what is positive stays positive, what is negative now becomes positive. So now you got these consecutive cosine functions, like bloop, 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 bloop. You low pass filter it, okay? So you only have DC components. And then you, you apply a threshold to find the peaks. And that is how you align, okay? To, to find out exactly where you should be sampling, where the peaks are. All right, so that was a quick lecture, but a very important one that you'll be using a lot in practice. All right, so that is lecture seven of ECE 3311.